Good morning, Hello Baptist family, friends. Uh, thank you for joining us on this Sunday uh, for our worship experience. Uh, we look forward to uh, sharing with you again inside the sanctuary. Uh, we give honor and praises to God. Thank you, Bishop Matthews, for allowing me to share on this particular day. Turn your Bible with me to Hebrews, the ninth chapter. And we're going to look at verses uh, 11 through 14. Wake people up at the house if they're sleeping. Tell them, come on, join you on the couch. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 through 14. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it says, But Christ came as high priest of good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of a heifer sprinkled the unclean sanctities for the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience, from dead works to serve the living God. For as long as the Holy Spirit requires me today, uh, I want to preach from the subject, I've got you. And when I say I got you, I'm not saying that uh, Eric has you. Uh, Jesus wants you to know that he's got you. And during this month of April, we had Easter, we had uh, communion on the second Sunday, uh, the bishop preached on last week after the resurrection. And so as I was reading this Sunday, I thought it would be important for us to know and remember that Jesus the Christ is in full control and that no matter what goes on, that he has got you. Oftentimes we forget about what it really means to be Christian. Our memory banks sometimes get a little faulty, a little flustered, if you will. Uh, we all know the stories about Jesus Christ, how Jesus uh, was born in a manger, how Jesus suffered, how he bled, how he died, how he was buried. And the Bible also tells us three days later, he got up with all power. I believe that sometimes we take this story for granted. We really don't understand the full significance and meaning of what it means to be Christian and to be washed in the blood. Sometimes we take it for granted. We come to church for many different reasons. Some of us come to church uh, 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 to fellowship with our friends. Some of us come for the music, especially when our favorite choir is singing. Some of us come just to be close to other people. Come, some of us come because we like to hear the prosperity ministry preached. We, we come for many different reasons, but uh, most of us do not come for the understanding of the bloodline. We don't come to get closer to Jesus. We don't come to have full meaning and understanding of what it means to be a baptized believer. But if we can remember in our hearts that that, red, that bloodline stretches all the way from Genesis to revelations. Lord, help me, Spirit. We often forget that our salvation did not come at a cheap price. It cost something. Peter said that we were redeemed not with a, 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 a silver and gold, but we were redeemed with the precious, watch that word now, with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Our salvation came with a precious and expensive cost. It cost our Lord and Savior his life for us to be cleansed, for us to have salvation. Remember now that God made man. God made us in his own image. First he made Adam and Eve and, and, and there, was, there was nothing uh, that they need and or wanted for. He made us in his own image. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And it wasn't until God just breathed life into Adam 
and took his rib bone and made ye that he might have a help me. And then he gave us or gave them free will. Y'all know the story. Then Satan came on the scene and, and, and the snake came to the woman and the woman got Adam to eat the apple and, 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 and at that point uh, uh, lost all sense of responsibility because before all of this they were naked and unashamed and then after they ate of the fruit God came and walked and said Adam where are you? He said I was hiding. He said why you don't have sense enough to hide? Why are you hiding from me? Did you do what I told you not to do? Did you eat from the tree? Adam, as you know, we do say, well, you know, it was the woman you gave me that caused me, you know, and from that point on, we didn't take any responsibility for anything. Lord have mercy. That's when all excuses started. We would come up with any different reason when we find ourselves in trouble to not accept responsibility for our own actions. Lord have mercy. I, I, I was born into a bad situation. I was born into the ghetto. My mother was not there. My father wasn't in the household. I didn't have this. I didn't have that. All these things caused me to be in a situation, a predicament. I am in now. All lies. Because how many times have you heard about the goodness, the grace, and the mercies of Jesus Christ? How many times have you heard the gospel preached? It doesn't matter where you came from. What matters is where you're going. Jesus the Christ. Yes. Trying to be the victims all the time. Hmm. Somebody introduced you to Jesus through your life. So it doesn't matter. Stop dwelling on the negative and think about the positive. Because God can and will change your situation. Hmm. Because he started that bloodline. And it was God in fact that gave the first blood sacrifice because Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel and Cain came with a sacrifice of uh, 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 food from the ground and God rejected it and then Abel gave his sacrifice of blood of the slaughtered animal and God accepted it and Cain got so upset he killed his brother and God came back and said what is your brother what happened what, am I my brother's keeper huh Cain didn't understand, but Abel understand even without the law already being in effect, that you needed to come with a blood sacrifice. And through the death of Abel, God then went back to Adam and Eve. He knew that the fig that they covered themselves with was not enough. So he took the animal and he killed the animal and then he covered them. So God gave up the first sacrifice. But how many of us know that it was not... <laughs> just Cain. It was not just Abel that was going to be required to give up a blood sacrifice because from that point on, God required the Bible says a blood sacrifice. It didn't matter if it was a goat. It didn't matter if it was a bull, a dove. If you didn't have any money, you can go into the forest and you can get a squirrel, a dove, and you would kill them and give the best that you had through a blood sacrifice to God. Hmm. Blood. God just didn't want anything, but he wanted the best that we had to offer. The blood. God wants us to stay in right relationship and covenant with him. And it's only through the blood that we are yet able to do that. Some of us dibbling down and we get under the covering of the blood and we come into the house, but then we got one foot in and we've got one foot out. The blood is sufficient enough to cover us wherever we may be, but wherever we may go. But God wants us to stay inside the circle, inside the sphere of his covering. Hmm. It's all about the blood. Hmm. Not who you are, or where you are, your nationality or your denomination. You can be black, white, red, or blue, or green. It doesn't matter who you are. The blood is sufficient enough to cover you. You can be Baptist, Catholic, Protestant, Methodist. It doesn't matter what denomination you are because your denomination is not what's going to get you in to heaven. Hmm. The blood came streaming down. When you're covered by the blood, death will skip over you. Death will walk by you. Death will, we say, pass over you when you're covered by the blood. Hmm. All throughout the Old Testament, you see them, them coming with, them, they're bringing uh, 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 blood offerings and blood sacrifices. You see it in Exodus and the big, 
inheritance. And you see it in Numbers and Deuteronomy that come with lambs and goats and bulls and heifers. They pour, pour and kill the livestock to bring a blood offering to God. A pigeon, dove, whatever it takes. God says he requires. Huh. One planet is getting high already. He requires a blood sacrifice. When you come to God, you've got to be willing to bring some blood. Your offering has to be pure. Hmm. Can't be a, a, a sick animal. You know, sometimes we want to get rid of, a, a, of the bad things. You can't offer God bad stuff. He doesn't want cripple. He, doesn't, he wants the best that you have to offer. He wants to pick up the litter. He wants the best that you can give. Because God is looking for hmm, and requires that blood offering. But what's so great about uh, the lamb and the goat and the bull and, 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 and the pigeon or whatever it is that you think your best is? And the answer to that is absolutely nothing. Because in, chapter, in verse 9 it says, it was a symbol hmm, for the present time identifying what was to come. They were just a uh, uh, so substitutionary, if you will. Just something to hold the place hmm, for that which was to come. They were not actually able to kill or heal sins or forgive sins, but they represented that which was to come. Y'all, y'all stay with me because I'm going somewhere here. Just like God commanded them to use oil if you will. Oil to anoint themselves. Oil to anoint the priest and to anoint the king and oil to anoint the vessels inside the tabernacle. The oil was just symbolic anointing. Hmm. Prefiguring the day that will come when hmm, the Holy Ghost would show up that day of Pentecost. The day that God would pour out the true anointing which was the Holy Ghost. Just like Peter said that when God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, that was not a substitute. That was not with olive oil, but God poured out into him the true anointing. Hmm. Lord, I've got you, Holy Spirit. A true anointing. And I know uh, 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 we constantly anoint one another with oil. We anoint our houses. We anoint our children. We anoint things as a symbol. <laughs> Lord, of that which is to come, the true anointing, the blood of the Lamb. And it's just like that symbolic anointing. That's what the lambs meant. That's what the goats and the pigeons meant. They were, they were only substitutes holding a place, prefiguring the day when Jesus would come and say, I got you. Because God requires a sacrifice, because God requires the blood. Lord, help me, Holy Spirit. God wants you to 
know today that he's got you. No need to be afraid of this COVID situation. And for all of you to say, I'm not going to take the shot. I don't want it. I don't understand it. I don't need it. When God brought the pandemic into the land, he knew that one day he would cleanse us. He would make a change. And if he provided a vaccine, what are you waiting for? What are